By day, this peaceful beach draws shorebirds and sunshine. By night, it's a teeming hotspot for horseshoe crabs. Lots of them. Hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands. And right here in the middle of the Delaware Bay or the beaches that we're at right here, Kitts Hummock, um, Ted Harvey Wildlife Conservation Area, and North Bowers Beach is the greatest concentration of crabs really along the whole Delaware Bay coastline. The gentle surf and ideal water conditions lure the animals here each spring. There's no way scientists could count all of them. Valencic and her colleagues enlist the help of volunteers to survey the beaches during the late night high tides of the new and full moons in May and June. Who am I working with? Kel, you can't. I think you're with, am I with you? On this evening, high tide begins at midnight. But it's a sleep deprivation science teacher Jim Hughes looks forward to every year. I'm from here, I grew up here, and as for as long as I can remember being, whether I was down at Rehoboth visiting with family down there, or coming to the beaches around here with my parents just on weekends, you know, the crabs have always been something that had been part of our community in my life. As the count begins, volunteers pace out locations along the beach where they will lay down their counting grids. They randomly sample square meter sections of the beach. These small samples will be used to predict how big the entire population is. 14 males, 3 females. Mature horseshoe crabs come to the beach to mate. And he has specially adapted front pinchers that um, are often called like boxing gloves. And you can see they have kind of a hook on them, which they actually clamp onto the back of the female's carapace. Females leave their eggs buried in the sand, and two weeks later they hatch and float out to sea. For migrating shorebirds, these eggs are a vital food source on the stopover from South America to the Arctic. We're one of the only areas in the world where you get such a high level of crab population and the shorebirds coming up to, to you know, rest and refuel. And it's, it's an intricate part. And when you find that the Delaware and New Jersey hold such a key to like so many different species that migrate from the southern parts of South America all the way up to northern Canada, it, it makes you realize that your one little piece actually has a big impact. The volunteers have a big impact too. Their data are used to develop regulations on horseshoe crab harvesting to make sure the population levels stay healthy. There has been concern recently that the horseshoe crabs were being overfished. They're used in traps to catch conch and for biomedical purposes. But a declining crab population impacts shorebirds by reducing their food supply. So state governments issued stricter fishing limits and biologists estimate that the horseshoe populations are now rebounding. Carrie, these are odd-looking creatures, to say the least, and, and they look prehistoric. How long have they been around? A lot longer than Delaware. Uh, I think the estimates are about 300 million years that these animals have been on Earth. Um, and since that time, they haven't changed very much, so they're actually called living fossils. And what are states doing to protect these uh, animals? Right. So as I mentioned, in the last decade, um, states and federal government have um, implemented regulations to restrict the amount of harvesting. New Jersey, for the last two years, has had a complete ban on taking the animals. In Delaware and Maryland, that's restricted to about 100,000 animals a year. And then in May and June, during the spawning season, there's even tighter regulations on that. All right. I have a newfound respect for the horseshoe crab, Carrie Grenz. Thank you very much.